Jensen Juan, CEO y fundador de NVIDIA, dio una presentación en el AI Summit en India, específicamente en Mumbai. Como una de las figuras clave que lideran el movimiento de la inteligencia artificial, Juan tiene una visión clara sobre el rumbo de esta tecnología. En su presentación, compartió conceptos interesantes que serán fundamentales para el desarrollo futuro de la IA. But we know now that the scaling of CPUs has reached its limit. We can't continue to ride that curve, that uh, free ride, the free ride of Moore's law has ended. We have to now do something different, or depreciation will end. And we now will not enjoy depreciation, but experience inflation, computing inflation. And that's exactly what's happening around the world. We no longer can afford to do nothing in software and expect that our computing experience will continue to improve, that cost will decrease, and continue to spread the benefits of IT and to benefit from solving greater and greater challenges. We started our company to accelerate software. Our vision was there are applications that would benefit from acceleration if we augmented general purpose computing. We take the workload that is very compute intensive and we offload it and we accelerate it using a model we call CUDA, a programming model that we invented called CUDA that made it possible for us to accelerate applications tremendously. That acceleration benefit has the same qualities as Moore's Law. For applications that were impossible or impractical to perform using general purpose computing, we have the benefits of accelerated computing to realize that capability. For example, computer graphics. Real-time computer graphics was made possible because of NVIDIA coming into the world and make possible this new processor we call GPUs. The GPU was really the first accelerated computing architecture running CUDA running computer graphics, a perfect example. We democratized computer graphics as we know it. 3D graphics is now literally everywhere. It could be used as a medium for almost any application. But we felt that long-term, accelerated computing could be far, far more impactful. And so over the last 30 years, we've been on a journey to accelerate one domain of application after another. The reason why this has taken so long is simply because of this. There is no such magical processor that can accelerate everything in the world. Because if you could do that, you would just call it a CPU. You need to reinvent the computing stack from the algorithms to the architecture underneath and connect it to applications on top. In one domain after another domain, computer graphics is the beginning, but we've taken this architecture, CUDA architecture, From one industry after another industry after another industry. Hubo una desaceleración en la adopción de la IA debido a que parte del software necesitaba ser reescrito. En este contexto, se introduce el concepto de software 2.0, que plantea una transformación clave. Anteriormente, los humanos escribían los algoritmos y el código con instrucciones explícitas, definiendo cada paso de lo que las computadoras debían hacer. En contraste, el software 2.0 se basa en el aprendizaje automático, donde los humanos ya no escribirán el código directamente. Jensen Juan explica este fenómeno en detalle. I think it's very very clear now. The world has completely changed. Now let's think about what happened. The first thing that happened, of course, is how we do software. Our industry is underpinned by the method by which software is done. The way that software was done, call it software 1.0, programmers would code algorithms, we call functions, into to run on a computer. And we would apply it to input information to predict an output. Somebody would write Python or C or Fortran or Pascal or C++, code algorithms that run on a computer. You apply input to it and output is produced. Very classically, the computer model that we understood quite well. And it, of course, created one of the largest industries in the world, right here in India, the production of software. Coding, programming became a whole industry. This all happened within our generation. 
However, that approach of developing software has been disrupted. It is now not coding, but machine learning. Using a computer, using a computer to study the patterns and relationships of massive amounts of observed data to essentially learn from it the function that predicts it. And so we are essentially designing a universal function approximator using machines to learn the expected output that would produce such a function. And so going back and forth, looking, this is software 1.0 with human coding to now software 2.0 using machine learning. Notice who is writing the software. The software is now written by the computer. And after you're done training the model, you inference the model. You then apply that function now as the input, that function, that large language model, that deep learning model, that computer vision model, speech understanding model, is now an input neural network that goes into the GPU that can now make a prediction given new input, unobserved input. This way of doing software, notice, is based on fundamentally machine learning. And we have gone from coding to machine learning, from developing software to creating artificial intelligence, and from software that prefers to run on CPUs to now neural networks that runs best on GPUs. This, at its core, is what happened to our industry in the last 10 years. We have now seen a complete reinvention of the computing stack. The whole technology stack has been reinvented. The hardware, the way that software is, able to, is, is developed, and what software can do is now fundamentally different. A massive system designed to study data at an enormous scale so that we could discover patterns and relationships and learn the meaning of the data. This is the Greek breakthrough. In the last several years, we have now learned the representation or the meaning of words and numbers and images and pixels and videos, chemicals, proteins, amino acids, fluid patterns, particle physics. We have now learned the meaning of so many different types of data. We have learned to represent, how to represent information in so many different modalities. Not only have we learned the meaning of it, we can translate it to another modality. So one great example, of course, is translating English to Hindi. Translating English, large body of text, into other English, summarization, from pixels to image image recognition from words to pixels, image generation, from images, videos, to words, captioning, from words to proteins used for drug discovery, from words to chemicals, discovering new compounds, from amino acids, to proteins, understanding the structure of proteins. These fundamental ideas, essentially a universal translator of information from any modality to another modality, has led to a Cambrian explosion of the number of startups in the world. They're applying the basic method I just described. If I could do this and that, what else can I do? If I can do that and this, what else can I do? The number of applications has clearly exploded. In the last couple, two, three years, the number of generative AI companies around the world, tens of thousands, tens of billions of dollars have been invested in this field, all because of this one instrument that made it possible for us to study data at enormous scales. Jensen Juan habló sobre los agentes de IA, a los que se refiere como super empleados, destacando su potencial revolucionario.
para crear estos superempleados, describió el ciclo de vida de los agentes, que incluye entrenar la IA con enormes cantidades de datos para adquirir habilidades esenciales, ajustar su comportamiento para satisfacer necesidades específicas de negocios y evaluar su desempeño para garantizar que cumpla con las expectativas. Este proceso incluye establecer límites y protocolos de seguridad para asegurar operaciones éticas y responsables, imitando el entrenamiento y la incorporación tradicionales de empleados, pero en el ámbito digital. Además, Juan mencionó el próximo gran avance que Nvidia tiene preparado en este campo. Couple of other ideas. And so earlier I told you that we have Blackwell, we have all of the libraries, acceleration libraries that we were talking about before, but on top there are two very important platforms we're working on. One of them is called Nvidia AI Enterprise and the other is called Nvidia Omniverse and I'll explain each one of them very quick, quickly. First, Nvidia AI Enterprise. This is a time now where the large language models and the fundamental AI capabilities have reached a level of capabilities we're able to now create what is called agents. Large language models that understand, understand the data that, of course, is being presented. It could be, it could be streaming data, it could be video data, language model data, it could be data of all kinds. The first stage is perception. The second is reasoning about, given its observations, Uh, what is the mission and what is the task it has to perform. In order to perform that task, the agent would break down that task into steps of other tasks. And uh, it would reason about what it would take and it would connect with other AI models. Some of them are uh, good at, for example, understanding PDF. Maybe it's a model that understands how to generate images. Maybe it's a model that uh, uh, is able to retrieve information, AI information, AI semantic data from a uh, proprietary database. So each one of these uh, large language models are connected to the central reasoning large language model we call agent. And so these agents are able to perform all kinds of tasks. Uh, some of them are maybe uh, marketing agents, some of them are customer service agents, some of them are chip design agents. NVIDIA has chip design agents all over our company helping us design chips. Maybe they're software engineering Uh, agents. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe they're able to do uh, marketing campaigns, uh, supply chain management. And so we're going to have agents that are helping our employees become super employees. These agents or agentic AI models uh, augment all of our employees to supercharge them, make them more productive. Now, when you think about these agents, it's really the way you would bring these agents into your company is not unlike the way you would onboard uh, someone uh, who's a new employee. You have to give them training curriculum. You have to uh, fine tune them, teach them how to use, uh, how to perform the skills and the, uh, understand the vocabulary of your, of your company. Uh, you evaluate them, and so they're evaluation systems. And you might guardrail them. If you're an accounting agent, uh, don't do marketing. If you're a marketing agent, you know, don't report earnings at the end of the quarter, so on and so forth. And so each one of these agents are guardrailed. Um, that entire process we put into essentially an agent life cycle suite of libraries. And we call that NEMO. Our partners are working with us to integrate these libraries into their platforms so that they could enable agents to be created, onboarded, deployed, improved into a life cycle of agents. And so this is what we call NVIDIA NEMO. We have, um, on the one hand, the libraries. On the other hand, what comes out of the output of it is a API inference microservice we call NIMS. Essentially, this is a factory that builds AIs. And NEMO is a suite of libraries that onboard and help you operate the AIs. El próximo gran avance tras la expansión del mundo digital es el AMNIPS. Jensen Juan presentó el concepto de IA física, que combina la inteligencia artificial con robots para conectar el mundo digital y el físico. NVIDIA cuenta con tres tipos de sistemas clave para este tipo de IA, los sistemas de GX para el entrenamiento de IA, AMNIPS como plataforma para simulación y creación de gemelos digitales, y la plataforma Jetsen AGX para implementar IA en el mundo real. Los gemelos digitales son réplicas virtuales de objetos o entornos físicos que permiten a la IA experimentar y optimizar procesos en un entorno virtual antes de llevarlos a la práctica. 
Esta estrategia posibilita que los robots se entrenen en tareas complejas, prueben nuevos diseños de manufactura y simulen escenarios de desastres en un entorno digital dinámico que respeta las leyes de la física, simulando incluso complicaciones del mundo real como empleados virtuales con lesiones. The goal is to build something, to produce something, to make something. And that, those things that people make could be factories, it could be warehouses, it could be cars and planes and trains and uh, ships and so on and so forth. All kinds of things. Computers and servers, the servers that NVIDIA builds, it could be phones. Most companies in the largest of industries ultimately produces something. Sometimes produce production of service, which is the IT industry, but many of your customers are about producing something. Those, that next generation of AI needs to understand the physical world. We call it physical AI. In order to create physical AI, we need three computers, and we created three computers to do so. The DGX computer, which Blackwell, for example, is, is a reference design and architecture for, to create things like DGX computers for training the model. That model needs a place to be refined. It needs a place to learn. It needs the place to apply its physical capability, its robotics capability. We call that Omniverse, a virtual world that obeys the laws of physics where robots can learn to be robots. And Then when you're done with the training of it, that AI model could then run in the actual robotic system. That robotic system could be a car, it could be a robot, it could be an AV, it could be an autonomous moving robot, it could be a, a, a picking arm, uh, it could be an entire factory or an entire warehouse that's robotic. And that computer we call AGX, Jetson AGX, DGX for training, and then Omniverse For doing the digital twin. El salto de los gemelos digitales al mundo físico se logrará a través de la plataforma Jetsen, un sistema embebido más compacto diseñado para ejecutar IA directamente en robots y máquinas autónomas. Esta integración permite aplicaciones como automóviles autónomos, robots que trabajan en fábricas y almacenes realizando tareas delicadas y colaborando de forma fluida con trabajadores humanos. La IA física no se percibe como un reemplazo de los humanos, sino como un medio para ampliar nuestras capacidades, haciéndonos más eficientes y productivos. Los robots pueden encargarse de tareas pesadas y repetitivas, mientras los humanos se concentran en el control de calidad, la resolución de problemas y tareas especializadas que requieren ingenio y destreza. ¿Qué opinas sobre la transición de software 1.0 a software 2.0 y cómo crees que afectará la adopción de agentes de IA en la industria? ¿Consideras que esta reinvención del stack computacional podría revolucionar otros sectores además de la tecnología? Mejor mira este vídeo del futuro de la IA y los secretos del universo con Demis Hassabis. Si has llegado hasta aquí en el vídeo, quiero darte las gracias, déjame saber lo que piensas en los comentarios, dale like, suscríbete y no olvides activar la campanita para no perderte ninguno de nuestros vídeos, no te cuesta nada y nos ayudas un montón. Esto es IA Avanzada y nos vemos en el siguiente.